Hi, hi everyone, welcome to Weed and Secret and I'm this week I'm showing you how to make perfect round spinning bath bombs in two colours, just a simple design um, but I'm going to give you some tips on how to make them perfect. The recipe is in the description box below the video as usual. Let's go and make some bath bombs shall we? Let's get fizzy. Today I'm going to show you how to do a really simple two colour design in a round bath bomb. So I've got some yellow bath bomb colour mixed up here and I've got some orange. The yellow is from Easy Colours and so is the orange but I have added some neon mica into the orange as well and what inspired me to make these today is this bath bomb that i found on the shelf um in my bath bomb room and it smells and looks as though i'd made it yesterday and i had a sniff and i thought what is that oh wow it's snow fairy so i'm actually using snow fairy from The soap kitchen used to be soap supplier, uh, but it's now the soap kitchen, so that's what I'm using. And it, the smell is still as strong as the day I made it. Um, so it's literally sat on the shelf, I think for nine months, because I went through my batch book uh, to find the last time that I made Snow Fairy bath bombs, and it was nine months ago. Um, so I know that it's sat on the shelf at least nine months and still as good as new. So I've got to make some more today. So as I said, you just need two colours already mixed up in your container. Right, okay, so let's make some bath bombs, shall we? So I'm using um, some biodegradable glitter here. This one is from Mineral Makeup Ingredients and it's light gold powder 90k is i'm going to sprinkle some of that beautiful gold glitter in there it doesn't come out the container very well this stuff and then just mix a little bit of orange a little bit of yellow press that down and that will keep the glitter perfectly in place but what we're going to do next is we're going to add some of the, the orange we're going to sprinkle it on the top of the yellow like so and this is what makes it just a really easy simple design dead easy to do just sprinkle it all over the top you can see it's getting lumpy which means it's ready to be pressed the longer you leave it the thicker all these clumps get and then it gets harder to actually press your bath bombs together i don't usually leave it this long and i don't even know why i have done today but So we're just going to take that, another another base, and when we scoop in, we're going to make sure we get right down into the yellow and the orange there, you see? And then we're just going to gently press. Don't press too hard because that's what will press far too much mixture into your round bath bomb. I always tap the excess off and then I just place it on the side. To dry out but I usually put an elastic band around them another easy way if you don't want to do it the way I said is just to sprinkle your glitter in because we've already got some powder mix here we'll just press that in like so and then get another fill And 
and then I'm going to put some music on and speed the camera up while I make all of these bath bombs. Enjoy! Now you might have noticed that what I did there was I worked away in this corner and I just left all of this mix on this side and I slowly took the mix until I've got my last few crumbs because this is quite a big batch we're doing uh, 1, 2, 3, 28, 29, 30, maybe 31 uh, bath bombs in this mix and the reason I worked from one side to the other and didn't touch what was on this side is especially if it's airy in your room or you've got a window open, a dehumidifier on or an air conditioning unit running um, I don't want to touch this side because all the moisture's in there underneath and if you start lifting your mix up and rubbing it all the way through during your process your mixture dries out and then you can't actually press any bath bombs so you need that mix moisture to stay in the powder and not evaporate into the air um, not all of it's going to evaporate but enough of it will evaporate that this just turns into dry sand and then you can't press the bath bombs together it just doesn't work so that's a great tip for you if you're wanting to make larger batches you should never ever be spraying extra witch hazel or water onto a batch so because if you make say you make six bath bombs and then you spray your mix again it that part is going to be different to the first part and adding too much mixture makes your bath bombs rock hard but it can also make them expand if it's warm and it can also give you those little granulated speckles all over your bath bomb um like the um oh what's the word um oh 
I can't remember what the word is but so it's like they start to fizz uh, and it's just because you've got far too much liquid in there so the amount of liquid that I do in the round bath, bomb, bath bombs is different to the ones I do in the plastic flat bottom moulds I actually use less witch hazel in the round bath bombs um, it just makes them a bit lighter and they un unmould out of the mould easier and they fizz better if you've got too much witch hazel or too much water it it's really slows down the fizzing action um, and I've only just worked that out <laughs> So we're down to the last couple now. And I just thought we'd do that on regular speed. Looks like we're only going to get one. Now, I don't know if you ever press a bath bomb and you get these craters in there. Can you see that? Well, what all that is is that because the the mixture started clumping clumping together on its own, you just need to make sure where you put a little bit more mixture in and then press it and give it another squeeze. And I'm hoping when I take this off, we've got a nice smooth finish. A lot smoother finish, isn't it? just makes a big difference right we haven't got enough there to make another full bath bomb so I'll just press half of a bath bomb with that and that'll go in with somebody's order Just saves you wasting any. And just to level it off, you could do exactly the same as what you do with the flat bath bombs. Just take your knife and level it off. And give it a rub over with the back of your spoon. And if you want to, you can just use the this one for yourself or do it as a tester to see how it fizzes okay so that's our batch of bath bombs made 28 29 30 31 so that's what I call a double batch uh, so all together the bicarb is going to be 4.8 kilos just on the bicarb okay so if I'm leaving a bath bomb in a mould, they seem to like to stay in a warm room, not a hot room, a warm room. Uh, they seem, tend to dry out quicker because obviously if it's still encased in its mould, it's going to take a lot longer to dry out. When you unmould a bath bomb, as soon as you've pressed it, you need to put those bath bombs in a cooler room and that will stop, stop them expanding or getting a rough surface on them um, so that's how I tend to do it I'll just get my elastic bands from Amazon I'll put a link to them in the description box below the video so you know exactly which size I've got the aluminium moulds that I'm using, they are the 7 centimeter moulds, but they, they're almost impossible to find. And they seem to be doing 8 centimeter moulds now, uh, which is great, but that's like even bigger than the Lush bath bombs. This size here that we're doing here is the same size as the bath bombs that you get at Lush. So that's why I like this size. 
uh, to me it's the perfect size for a bath bomb but you know it's nice to have smaller ones and larger ones if you want them obviously when when you're selling product the more expensive something is the less likely it's going to sell so I should have some smaller ones as well really but I've always thought that making a lot of smaller products obviously you get less for a smaller product but the effort involved is exactly the same as pressing a bath bomb this size uh, so it just means you've got to make double the quantity of the smaller ones to equal the, the money that you get back on the larger ones so I've never really made a lot of minis the only reason I made mini cupcakes is because people were asking for them all the time no one ever asked for smaller bath bombs uh, but I do intend to make some because I have actually bought some moulds that are a little bit smaller than 200 grams this these bath bombs here they're round about 200 grams in weight, probably a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. It just depends how much you actually squeeze into that mould. So you're not going to get, every bath bomb is never going to be the same, exactly the same weight, unless you weigh the mixture into the mould, which I have seen some people do, and I've, I've even done it myself uh, when I'm using the bath bomb press. Um... It's handy to do it that way when you're using the bath bomb press because the bath bomb press has this beautiful neat lip all the way around the edge of the bath bomb and if you don't get the same amount into each one then that lip is going to either expand or shrink just depending on how much mixture is in there. So while I've been talking I managed to get all of those elastic bands on there and we're just going to leave these i won't unmold these until tomorrow so it'll probably be a full 24 hours before i unmold sometimes you can unmold them sooner sometimes you can't and the way you find out is when you unmold uh, if it doesn't want to unmold easily and you can feel that the bath bomb mixture is actually sticking to the outside of the mold it doesn't want to come out as easy you know they're not dry enough to one mold yet so you just leave it put the elastic band back on and just leave them for another few hours and then try again now don't leave them in too long because if you leave them in too long they do actually expand in the mold and uh, that can be a nightmare it makes them much much harder to get out of the mold the bigger they are in there the harder they are to unmold.
Okay, so if you want lots of bubbles, all you need to do is turn your tap on. And I'm now going to show you, empty in the bath, how clean the bath is when we're finished. Obviously, if you leave the tap on longer, you're going to get a lot more bubbles and more bubble bath. So there you see, a nice clean rinsed bath because we're using water-based liquid dyes in our bath bombs. Yes, we use some mica as well. The neon micas, the pink, the orange, the yellow and the green tend to be okay with not staining the bath. Blue of, of many different kinds in colours is one of the ones that is absolutely notorious for staining the bath. So um, I'm sure with it, any blue water based liquid dye you buy from Easy Colours will be absolutely fine as long as it's meant for bath bombs. Read up the information when you're buying the colour, make sure it is bath bomb safe. And that's it for today. Just before we do disappear today, um, it's I just feel like I want to say something. It's 20 years since 9-11 and it's no less shocking to me today than it was 20 years ago. I remember where I was when I found out. I was driving to work on my way to Keswick and my mother phoned me and she told me and the way she told me it, I mean, at the, at the time she told me, you know, it wasn't the end of the day or anything like that. It was like, oh, the bomb and everything in America. I mean, that's that's how it was put to me. And it was just so incredibly shocking. But to see the footage, it was even more shocking. And it's still as shocking today as it was all those years ago. But I, I also want to take a moment to let you know that all disasters around the world, wherever they are, are pretty heartbreaking. And my heart goes out to all of you as well. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye bye for now.